Hello folks. Now you're not seeing things. I'm not Scrimper's twin brother because I've got a tie on. It's still Scrimper and I know it's stupid but I always put a tie on when I go shopping. I'm usually in a scruffy old shirt with holes in the sleeves. That's where you're used to seeing me. So I thought you might find it a bit of a shock to see me with a tie on. Anyway, today I'm here to talk about radial arm sores. And yes, you did hear me correctly. I did say sores in the plural because I've got two. Now I know that's odd. Why would you want two radial arm sores? Well, I will explain that later in the video why I've got two radial arm sores. But at the moment, I'll tell you a bit about the actual sore. Now, don't confuse the radial arm sore with the so-called chop sores. They're a different thing altogether. Sometimes they're called mitre sores. They're not the same as a radial arm sore, although they do do the same sort of thing. Let's just show you. Now this, folks, is a chop saw, or motor saw, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I don't actually like these. I've got this one. I didn't actually buy it. It was given to me from somebody who had it and wanted to get rid of it. And uh, it's a noisy thing. It's got a carbon brush type motor in it, which tends to be very harsh and noisy. Uh, obviously, there are better ones out there, and I'm pretty sure they'd make them with induction motors, which is obviously much nicer. And smoother this is a fairly cheap quality thing you can move the table around like this for different angles and stuff but i suppose the main advantage of a chop saw is that uh, you can cart it about and take it on site whereas the radial arm saw is not so convenient in that aspect now the radial arm saw was invented by an american raymond e dewalt back in 1922 dewalt worked in a sawmill and he realized that he could save a lot of time by mounting a saw on a rack and using it in the way similar to what the modern radial arm saw works. At the time it was said that it did the work of four men, so it obviously saved the mill a lot of money, and DeWalt went on to form this uh, company making the actual saws, the radial arm saw as we see today. This is my DeWalt DW1251 radial arm saw. If you've never seen a radial arm saw before, or don't know what they are, this is it. Basically it's a 10 inch circular saw blade which rotates obviously and you place your wood against the fence here and pull the saw across and it cuts a lovely square edge on the end of the timber. Now obviously uh, there are other models and makes and they can have different size blades. This one's a 10 inch blade or 250 millimeter if you want to want it in metric. Uh, I, I prefer the Imperial myself. Um, you'll notice that mine is in a long bench i've got a long bench here and this is into it when you buy the saw originally it doesn't come with this it just comes with a small table as i'll show you on the instruction booklet cover there this is what it's like when you first buy it it the stand's optional but you get this wooden table with the saw mounted on it when you buy it but what i've done i've incorporated that into the bench uh, to make one long unit so providing you get everything level it works much nicer like that uh, and you've got some more support for the for long pieces of timber. Now where do I start and show you how to use it? It's not easy because there are so many aspects of it. Firstly I'll just point out this little piece on the bench here, this inset. What I've done, I've um, routed out a section of the top here. Uh, I just use a piece of, any piece of wood, this is a bit of old mahogany. And then I just put that, insert that in there, it's held on by six screws. And I can, by doing that, when this is worn out, I can just change it. That's one I changed recently. As you can see, it's a fairly new one. And I always make two or three of those and have them spare. There's one here that, that I've done already for next time. And just pop that up there. And then when this wears out, I can just replace it easily. Uh, it doesn't matter, but it does make it better because it gives the timber some support underneath. Uh, now I'll show you it working, I think. The first thing I'm going to do, I'll actually get a piece of wood on it and cut it just to show what it does and then I'll explain the, the particular aspects of it. So the first thing to do is find a piece of wood. Now I've got some in my scrap box. This will do, nothing too fancy. Just pop that on. I'm just going to put my headphones on because it's quite noisy. The first noise you hear when I turn the switch on at the wall here isn't this saw, that's the cleaner I've got underneath sucking up the sawdust and I'll explain that in a bit. I'll just turn it on then. The light comes on as well, I've got it so the saw and the suction comes on. I'm going to put my headphones on and then I'll press the switch and turn the saw on. Here we go. 
put you on a gas fence like that. And there's a nice straight 90 degree cut edge on there look. There's nothing really that will give you such a clean cut as that actually, I don't think anyway. Because it will be square both ways. Brilliant. As I mentioned earlier, I've got two of these radial arm saws. And you're thinking, why on earth would anybody want two? Well the answer is, you wouldn't want two normally, unless you were in a woodworking uh, factory or something like that, you don't need two radial arm saws. But the reason I've got them is quite simple. I have an old friend who I've mentioned in my other videos, uh, a Mr. Fowles, the late Mr. Fowles, and he was also into woodwork. And if I bought something, a machine, he'd come over and see it, and then he'd want one, so he'd go and do, buy one of his own. So when I bought this one, the DW1251, after he'd seen it, he went and bought this one, the DW1201, which is a slightly smaller model. Now, the reason um, I've got two is that when he got older, he decided he couldn't do woodwork anymore, he couldn't get down to his shed, and he decided to pack it up and take up photography, and he wanted a camera, so we did a deal, and I bought most of the equipment out of his workshop, um, so he could buy a camera, and this was, was in, the, in the deal, and initially I brought it home and didn't want it, so I stuck it in the shed, and it sat there for a year or two, and then I thought, well, it's a shame leaving it in there. I'll clean it all up and get it, put it into use. So, which is why I built it into this, this bench here. Uh, now, the thing is that sometimes, if I'm using this one and I've got this saw set up, I might find that I, I, I require to cut a piece of wood off, but I don't want to alter any settings on here. So, it's handy to have this, and I can simply use this one. Now, I will show both working in a moment, so you can see the difference. But basically. This is a one and a half horsepower model, the most powerful. This is a one horsepower one. Uh, the main difference is it's a smaller build. Uh, also, this one is a folding model. Obviously, I can't fold it because I fitted it permanently into the bench. But the idea was that you could fold it and hang it on the wall. Or you could take it away in a vehicle and use it on site somewhere, as you do with modern chop saws. But I've never used it as a folder. Now, the main... The main thing I use the saw for, well, practically all the time, is just normal cross-cutting uh, to get a square edge on a piece of timber. And I don't really use it for anything else. I do sometimes cut a few dados with it for I'm doing jointing. But originally the saw was described as a home workshop and it would do all sorts of different things. You could do cross-cutting, rip sawing, uh, moulding, cutters and all sorts of things. And I will mention that a bit later on. But for the moment, I'll concentrate on the sawing aspects of it, which is how I use it. It's set up at the moment for normal cross-cutting at 90 degrees, which is what it's used for most of the time. If you want to do uh, a partial cut, then all you do, you just wind this handle and, and wind the saw up like this. It's a bit awkward because I've got some clamps on the wall. Behind. And as you can see, the whole saw raises from the table, so you can do a partial cut which is useful if you're doing joints and, or dados and things. I'll just put it right there. Now the other thing you'll notice around here, there, there are, are two handles. If you pull this handle down, it will loosen the whole thing. You can then, by moving this, you can swing the saw around, which enables the saw to be across uh, and do a mitre cut. You can do any angle, but predominantly you can put it at 45 degrees to cut mitres on it. I don't do that, I've got a better method, I've made a jig to do that and I'm going to show you that a bit later in the video. If you go down to the other side of the saw here, you'll see some more levers here. This one here loosens the whole yoke assembly. So you can pull the saw right out like this, swivel this around so the blade is parallel with the, the fence here. And then with the saw locked around like that, you can push your wood along through the saw this way so that the wood goes that way and the saw will rip it to size. The only problem with that is it can be quite dangerous rip saw and it can throw the timber out at you. In fact, my old friend who I mentioned earlier, he had it set up in his shed and he decided to do a bit of rip sawing and the saw caught the piece of wood and it shot it off like a bullet out of the side and it went right through the side of the shed and made a hole in his shed wall 
And when I used to go there, I used to see a patch he'd put on the wall where the piece of wood went through, but it just shows how dangerous it could be. Fortunately, he was stood in front of the table, so it didn't hit him, but it, it could do a lot of damage to you. Uh, so you've got to be very careful of that. So I don't use it for rip saw, and I've got a proper surface saw for rip sawing because it's much safer and better. You can, as I mentioned, rotate the saw around at any angle, say 90 degrees, to give a mitre cut. At the same time, the whole yoke here, where the motor unit is, can also be angled either way uh, on the yoke, which means that you can cut a mitre the other way as well, which means in effect you can do a compound mitre cut, which is a mitre at, at, uh, at one angle and also at the cut is at an angle, so it's what they call a compound mitre, two mitres in one, which is quite difficult to do. And you can do it quite easily on this saw, but again, it's not a thing you'd need to do very often, but the, the possibility is there if you needed it. Now the saw was advertised as a home workshop and it could carry out all sorts of operations as well as sawing. And it did come actually with a, a helpful chart which showed some of those operations that, that the saw could do. This is the chart. Um, as well as doing sawing, you could do tenoning, in, grooving, shaping, sanding, various types of sanding, disc and drum. Uh, you could use a, mount a router on it and, and use it for routing, or you could use it as a drilling machine and several other things as well as cutting motors and that obviously. So it did come with that. It also came with three manuals, um, the normal operating manual, adjustment and operating instructions and a manual of all the spare parts, plus this wonderful workshop handbook which went into 130 pages and went into a huge amount of detail on how to use a saw and what you could do with it. it. even showed you how to make something, I think it was a table or something in the book. You don't buy many machines or anything today where you get such good instructions with it and you're lucky if you get just a pamphlet telling you how to take the thing out of the box. And I think it's really marvellous you get that. On top of the manuals and the wall chart, it also came with some of the accessories, unbelievably. Normally you have to buy all these things separate, but for example it came with this disc for disc sanding, which you can take the blade off and mount that on and use it as a disc sander. Uh, uh, also came with this drum sanding unit, which you'll see I've never actually used. And uh, you put this on in place of the saw blade and you can use it as a drum sander. And it's not a cheap rubbishy thing like you buy today made in China or something. This is a, a quality product and you can see it's made of aluminium with a rubber tire around it. And not only did they supply that with the saw, it also came with a, a load of actual replacement uh, abrasive things for it. And there's about 10 there. I mean, how often do you buy, you get something like that? You buy something, and then you have to go out and buy the sanding disc to go on it. This came with it, all free included in the price, which is amazing, really. Not only did I get that, though, it also came with this, which is a, a dado set. Now, again, I've never used it. The idea is you've got um, two saw blades and these larger sort of cutters here, and then you can mount them together and then use it to cut grooves, and, you know, once you've assembled it, it tells you all about it in the book. Uh, again, like you can see it's never been used, but uh, this, is, this is for cutting larger grooves and things. And amazingly, that came with the saw as well, included it, all included in the price, operate instructions. I mean, that instruction book there, believe it or not, that's just for that little dado head. You get that today, if you buy a machine, you're lucky if you even get that with it, a complex machine. And this instruction book came with just the dado head. Amazing how things have changed. Uh, but I say I've never used it, and it's probably quite dangerous, I would think, but nevertheless, it's, it's good to have these things. Well, that's all for part one. In part two, I shall discuss mitre cutting and my homemade mitre jigs, dust extraction, and more on using the saw in general. See you in part two.